At an event held at Facebook headquarters, CEO Mark Zuckerberg put an end to some persistent rumors. Today we're finally going to talk about that Facebook phone. <laughs> um, or more accurately, we're going to talk about how you can turn your Android phone into a great, simple social device. With its new product that's only available on certain Android phones, the social network makes a grab at precious real estate on your mobile device. The home screen is really the soul of your phone. You look at it about a hundred times a day. It sets the tone for your whole experience and we think that it should be deeply personal. Facebook Home transforms your home screen, even if your phone is locked, into a slideshow of photos and status updates, showing you your news feed without ever launching the Facebook app. If you're not a rabid Facebook user, then you might find that this experience kind of hijacks your phone and offers up a learning curve that you have to overcome in order to use it. With another feature, chat heads, messaging also infiltrates your phone. Buttons with the sender's profile picture pop up no matter which app you're currently using. Just by tapping on this chat head, it pops me into the conversation. And the thing that's so cool and so special about this is that this is all happening right over the article I'm about to read and right over the app I'm using. So no matter. Facebook Home isn't an operating system, but it does change your phone enough to make you relearn what you know about using Android. It still needs some work, but if you want to give Facebook Home a shot, here are five tips to help you navigate this new interface. With Facebook Home comes a new set of gestures you'll use to navigate the system. Let's start at the main screen, the cover feed. When you wake your phone up, notifications will be stacked here. You can swipe away a notification like this, or if you have a bunch, tap and hold one, then swipe them all away. Chat heads are controlled with similar gestures. By now, you probably know you can move them around the screen, but to get rid of a chat head, tap and hold, then drag it down to the X. You can also do this for multiple chat heads. Now, in the cover feed, you'll notice that photos are cropped. You never see the entire picture as you browse around. To see the full crop of a photo, just tap and hold it. To make life easier, Facebook Home combines your texts and your Facebook messages into one central place. Here's how it works. Grab your profile pic and swipe left to get to Messenger. To send a new Facebook message or an SMS, tap the plus button. As I type someone's name, I have the option here to send them a Facebook message. But if I want to send a text, I'll choose their name in this list down here. If you're texting, Facebook Home will use whatever photo you uploaded to their contact info on your phone in the chat head. Cover feed is great, but when it's plastered all over your lock screen, it can be a little overkill. Thankfully, there's an easy way to get your regular Android lock screen back. From Home, tap the Menu button, hit Settings, and uncheck this option here. Exit that, lock your phone, and you're welcome. You got your lock screen back. In that same settings window, there are a couple more things worth adjusting. First, know that you have the option here to show or hide the Android status bar. If you hide it, you can still access it by swiping down from the top at any time. But you won't always have a quick view of your phone's status and the time. Most important, though, is this data use and image quality setting. These options, high, medium, and low, let you control the image quality on the cover feed but it also determines the amount of data you use. The high setting, for example, will pull more data, refreshing the cover feed often and delivering high quality photos. So if you're worried about saving on data, choose the medium or low option. The best thing about Facebook Home is that it's not your operating system. Since it's a launcher, you can enable and disable it whenever you want. Back in settings, turn off Facebook Home and confirm. Now, when you hit your phone's home button, you'll get this warning. Basically, your phone is asking you if you want to use the Facebook home interface or the regular Android one. Tap Launcher, the Android one, hit Always, and Facebook Home will disappear. When you're ready to enable it again, just launch Facebook Home, but choose Home as the option when you get this message here. The most important thing to remember about Facebook Home is that it's brand new. So as time goes on, expect to see updates to this interface and hopefully some extra options for customizing it. Until then, hit me up on Twitter with any of your questions and check out howto.cnet.com for more tips like this. For CNET, 
I'm Sharon Vaknin. Facebook. You love it, you hate it, it's complicated. But in spite of the wild popularity of Facebook, I kind of feel bad for them. Aside from their disastrous IPO, this company has released more dud products over the past few years than anyone I can think of. I'm Donald Bell, and in today's show I'm here to refresh your memory with my list of the top five Facebook product flops. Features that set out to change the world, but didn't. At all. Starting things off at number five, Facebook Lite. Now this was a stripped down version of Facebook that was engineered to load more quickly for users on slow connections or slow hardware. They tossed out the apps, they tossed out the games, they decluttered the whole interface. Oh, and they also tossed out a bunch of those annoying flash-based ads on the sidebar. But those were the crazy pre-IPO days of 2009. Turns out that catering to poor people and serving less ads wasn't a project worth keeping around. After less than a year, Facebook Lite got switched off. At number four, Facebook questions. Now, with one billion users at your disposal, why not put them to work solving life's great questions? Launched in 2010 and killed off in 2012, Facebook questions gave users a way to pull their friends for questions like, uh, where's the best pizza in Portland? Or which Planet of the Apes sequel is the best? Or where the hell did Facebook questions go? It was supposed to be a fatal blow to Yahoo Answers, but instead it just kind of withered away. At number three, the ticker. In 2011, Facebook did a major overhaul of their news feed and gave us a terrifying and very annoying little window onto all of our friends' likes and shares and comments. It was like peering into the naked soul of Facebook and seeing its neurosis for what it really was. And people hated that thing. So Facebook quickly saw the error of their ways and gave us a way to hide it. Please hide it. Do yourself a favor. It's awful. Coming in at number two, Facebook Deals. Oh, this was a time when Mark Zuckerberg had the huevos to take on Groupon and Living Social. And I have to admit, it kind of seemed like a good idea. Who better than Facebook to know where you live, what you like, and where you like to travel? But maybe it was a little too perfect. A little too perfect not to be creepy. After four months, Google Deals got slashed. Now, before we get to number one, let's stop picking on Facebook for a minute you know another internet giant who makes a ton of mistakes? Google. Here are my favorite five Google flops, all of which are really just as embarrassing as anything Facebook has done. That said, at least Google has that whole don't be evil mission statement thing. Facebook could have used that to help prevent them from thinking up number one. Beacon. Hey, here's an idea. Let's make it so that Facebook can keep track of all the sites you browse outside of Facebook so that it can share that information with all of your friends. What could go wrong? Not creepy at all. The idea was such an affront to privacy that it resulted in a class action lawsuit, and even Mark Zuckerberg later admitted it was a mistake, which is not to say that he won't try it again. So there you have it, five ideas launched by the king of social networks that wound up right in the gutter. For more top fives like this, head over to top5.cnet.com. I'm Donald Bell, thanks for watching. Today, we began rolling out some new controls to make it simpler for you to control what you share on Facebook. These changes are a direct result of the feedback many of you have shared with us about our recent product launches. I wanted to share some of my thoughts with you about how Facebook has evolved and how what we're doing now gives you more control. When I started Facebook, it was built around a few simple ideas. People want to share and stay connected with their friends and the people around them. When people have control over what they share, they're comfortable sharing more. When people share more, the world becomes more open and connected. And in a more open world, many of the biggest problems we face together will become easier to solve. A lot has changed on Facebook since then, but these core principles remain true today. We started Facebook in a college dorm more than six years ago, and over time, Facebook has become less about colleges and more about sharing lots of content with different groups of people. Along the way, we needed new privacy controls and features to make that possible. A little more than a year ago, we began work on a big set of changes to how sharing and privacy work on Facebook. 
We recognize that we've changed a lot of things, so we've spent a lot of time reviewing your feedback so we could address your concerns. The number one thing we've heard is that there just needs to be simpler ways to control your information. We agree. So today, we started rolling out three new things to address this. First, we've built one simple master control that you can use to set who can see all of the content you share on Facebook. In one click, you can set all the content that you've ever posted to everyone, friends of your friends, or just your friends. No need to go through multiple settings anymore. Once you set the master control, it will apply to all new products we release going forward. And if you prefer more granular controls for specific types of content, you can still use those settings. We haven't removed anything in this update. We've just added a simple master switch to control all of your content at once. Second, we've reduced the amount of information that has to be visible to everyone in order to use Facebook. You no longer have to have your friends and your pages open to everyone. You can set those fields to be visible to whoever you want. Third, we've made it simple to control whether applications and websites can access any of your information. Many people enjoy playing games and using applications, but for those of you that don't, we've added the ability to turn off platform applications completely so none of your information is ever accessible to applications or websites. We've also simplified the control for turning off instant personalization on our partner sites. You can read more details about my thoughts on this topic in a blog post that I wrote today. Most importantly, though, please check out the new privacy page yourself when it launches for you. Note that the new controls will be going live gradually, so you may not see them right away. When you do, play around and find the settings that feel right for you. On a personal note, I just turned 26 a few days ago. As I look back to when I started Facebook, I'm amazed at how it's evolved and how so many of you are using it to stay connected all around the world. We've been through a lot of changes together, and we'll keep learning and we'll keep working hard to build the best service for you and for the world. So I just want to say thanks. You've all made Facebook what it is today. At an event held at Facebook headquarters, CEO Mark Zuckerberg put an end to some persistent rumors. Today we're finally going to talk about that Facebook phone. <laughs> um, or more accurately, we're going to talk about how you can turn your Android phone into a great, simple social device. With its new product that's only available on certain Android phones, the social network makes a grab at precious real estate on your mobile device. The home screen is really the soul of your phone. You look at it about a hundred times a day. It sets the tone for your whole experience and we think that it should be deeply personal. Facebook Home transforms your home screen, even if your phone is locked, into a slideshow of photos and status updates, showing you your news feed without ever launching the Facebook app. If you're not a rabid Facebook user, then you might find that this experience kind of hijacks your phone and offers up a learning curve that you have to overcome in order to use it. With another feature, chat heads, messaging also infiltrates your phone. Buttons with the sender's profile picture pop up no matter which app you're currently using. Just by tapping on this chat head, it pops me into the conversation. And the thing that's so cool and so special about this is that this is all happening right over the article I'm about to read and right over the app I'm using. So no matter what you're doing, you can just quickly pop into these conversations. A phone was unveiled, but Facebook isn't jumping into hardware. The new HTC First will be preloaded with Facebook Home. This is not a fancy phone. It doesn't have whistles and bells. It's not particularly pretty to see. Uh, it doesn't have fancy accents or anything like that. I think it's going to be a really tough sell. The only nice thing is the price. The phone will run $100, but Facebook addicts might consider the device priceless. In San Francisco, I'm Sumi Das, CNET.com for CBS News. Facebook Home isn't an operating system, but it does change your phone enough to make you relearn what you know about using Android. It still needs some work, but if you want to give Facebook Home a shot, here are five tips to help you navigate this new interface. With Facebook Home comes a new set of gestures you'll use to navigate the system. Let's start at the main screen, the cover feed. When you wake your phone up, notifications will be stacked here. You can swipe away a notification like this, or if you have a bunch, tap and hold one, then swipe them all away. 
Chat heads are controlled with similar gestures. By now, you probably know you can move them around the screen, but to get rid of a chat head, tap and hold, then drag it down to the X. You can also do this for multiple chat heads. Now, in the cover feed, you'll notice that photos are cropped. You never see the entire picture as you browse around. To see the full crop of a photo, just tap and hold it. To make life easier, Facebook Home combines your texts and your Facebook messages into one central place. Here's how it works. Grab your profile pic and swipe left to get to Messenger. To send a new Facebook message or an SMS, tap the plus button. As I type someone's name, I have the option here to send them a Facebook message. But if I want to send a text, I'll choose their name in this list down here. If you're texting, Facebook Home will use whatever photo you uploaded to their contact info on your phone in the chat head. Cover feed is great, but when it's plastered all over your lock screen, it can be a little overkill. Thankfully, there's an easy way to get your regular Android lock screen back. From Home, tap the Menu button, hit Settings, and uncheck this option here. Exit that, lock your phone, and you're welcome. You got your lock screen back. In that same settings window, there are a couple more things worth adjusting. First, know that you have the option here to show or hide the Android status bar. If you hide it, you can still access it by swiping down from the top at any time. But you won't always have a quick view of your phone's status and the time. Most important, though, is this data use and image quality setting. These options, high, medium, and low, let you control the image quality on the cover feed, but it also determines the amount of data you use. The high setting, for example, will pull more data, refreshing the cover feed often and delivering high quality photos. So if you're worried about saving on data, choose the medium or low option. The best thing about Facebook Home is that it's not your operating system. Since it's a launcher, you can enable and disable it whenever you want. Back in settings, turn off Facebook Home and confirm. Now, when you hit your phone's home button, you'll get this warning. Basically, your phone is asking you if you want to use the Facebook Home interface or the regular Android one. Tap Launcher, the Android one, hit Always, and Facebook Home will disappear. When you're ready to enable it again, just launch Facebook Home, but choose Home as the option when you get this message here. The most important thing to remember about Facebook Home is that it's brand new. So as time goes on, expect to see updates to this interface and hopefully some extra options for customizing it. Until then, hit me up on Twitter with any of your questions and check out howto.cnet.com for more tips like this. For CNET, I'm Sharon Vaknin. Facebook. You love it, you hate it, it's complicated. But in spite of the wild popularity of Facebook, I kind of feel bad for them. Aside from their disastrous IPO, this company has released more dud products over the past few years than anyone I can think of. I'm Donald Bell, and today's show I'm here to refresh your memory with my list of the top five Facebook product flops, features that set out to change the world, but didn't at all. Starting things off at number five, Facebook Lite. Now this was a stripped down version of Facebook that was engineered to load more quickly for users on slow connections or slow hardware. They tossed out the apps, they tossed out the games, they decluttered the whole interface. Oh, and they also tossed out a bunch of those annoying flash-based ads on the sidebar. But those were the crazy pre-IPO days of 2009. Turns out that catering to poor people and serving less ads wasn't a project worth keeping around. After less than a year, Facebook Lite got switched off. At number four, Facebook questions. Now, with one billion users at your disposal, why not put them to work solving life's great questions? Launched in 2010 and killed off in 2012, Facebook questions gave users a way to pull their friends for questions like, uh, where's the best pizza in Portland? Or which Planet of the Apes sequel is the best? Or where the hell did Facebook questions go? It was supposed to be a fatal blow to Yahoo Answers, but instead it just kind of withered away. At number three, the ticker. In 2011, Facebook did a major overhaul of their news feed and gave us a terrifying and very annoying little window onto all of our friends' likes and shares and comments. It was like peering into the naked soul of Facebook 
and seeing its neurosis for what it really was. And people hated that thing. So Facebook quickly saw the error of their ways and gave us a way to hide it. Please hide it. Do yourself a favor. It's awful. Coming in at number two, Facebook deals. Oh, this was a time when Mark Zuckerberg had the huevos to take on Groupon and Living Social. And I have to admit, it kind of seemed like a good idea. Who better than Facebook to know where you live, what you like, and where you like to that move the world forward in a significant way. It's a place to be inspired by the boundaries that we thought existed but don't. It's a place for laughter. I love this slide. <laughs> to enjoy things, the simple things in life. And it's a place for love. It's our collective belief that the world is better off, captured and shared, more permanently, that's what Instagram is. You see, Instagram is no single thing. It's a collection of ideas and inspiration, best captured and shared. And that's why to us, our mission is to capture and share the world's moments. And we live that every single day we come to work. Because we believe by doing that, we make the world a better place. It's really important to us. We've been at this now for a little over two and a half years, and it's come a long way. So right now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how far it's come. First, 16 billion photos have been shared on Instagram. That's a lot of pictures of coffee. <laughs> and there's some other stuff, too. We have an active and engaged community with over a billion likes every single day. That's billion with a B. Tons of engagement happening every single day across accounts like athletes, aspiring chefs, actors. It's where people come together to engage with each other. It's not just about photos, it's about coming together and staying connected. And now, 130 million people use Instagram every single month. That's amazing growth for a service that's only been around for a couple of years. And what's inspiring about this is that these are people just like you and me coming together share the world in real time. This is really significant. So I've talked to you about what Instagram is, where we were, where we are, but now we should discuss where we're going. If we're about capturing and sharing the world's moments, what's next? What do we work on? We've taken photos and made them beautiful. We've connected people from all different countries around the world, all different cultures. What do we work on next? I'm gonna tell you a story. And that story is September of 2010. Mike, my co-founder, and I were sitting in front of a whiteboard. 
pondering what's next. Two entrepreneurs not really sure, knowing what to do, what's next. We were working on a small location sharing app called Bourbon. And as part of Bourbon, you could share your location. And the two parts of sharing your location were posting a photo and posting a video. We decided that we needed to do something new. So we created Instagram out of Bourbon. The one part that we brought was photos, but we left video on the side. Why is that? Because we said the three things we want to be really good at are speed, simplicity, and beauty. And I'll tell you, at the time, two years ago, with the devices as they were, speed, simplicity, and beauty were definitely possible with photos. But it was really hard with video. Today, that all changes. And Instagram's going to be at the center of it. I'd like to introduce video on Instagram. I'm really excited about this announcement, not because of how hard the teams worked, yes, that's important, not because of how awesome this product is, yes, that's important, but because 130 million people day one are gonna have access to video in the way that they have access to pictures. So I wanna to talk to you about three things we focused on before actually showing you the product. First is simplicity. Simplicity really matters in these products. Okay, video is a complex medium. We're used to seeing complex editing interfaces. It's hard to edit, it's hard to manage, it's hard to upload. So if it's gonna work inside of Instagram that everyone knows for its simplicity, it's gotta be perfect. And I'm so proud of our team for working on an awesome product that gets there. The second part is, it wouldn't be Instagram without being beautiful. That is, it wouldn't be Instagram without allowing you to produce beautiful content. We need to do to video what we did to photos. And it's gotta fit in. And I've got some really special stuff in store to show you. The last part, and I touched on this briefly before, and the way that makes Instagram so different from anything else in the world is the community. Day one, 130 million people with access to recording the world's moments as they happen in real time. That's staggering. So let's take a look. You'll notice Instagram hasn't changed. We have our feed here, and I'm gonna walk through a demo now. What we've done is make Instagram better. So first, you tap on the capture button in the middle of the tab bar. And let's say we were at Blue Bottle Coffee in the city and we wanted to record a moment there. Now, what you'll notice is it's the same screen, but now you've got a video icon in the bottom right. Everyone's trying to see, I love it. Um, we'll move that up next time. Uh, so you tap the video icon, and all of a sudden you go into video mode. Slide over, you've got a separate capture button, all you have to do is hold down that button to start recording video, so let's do that. So let's say we're at Blue Bottle Coffee, they're using a Japanese siphon machine to make some really beautiful coffee. But I'll tell you, you can capture a lot in 15 seconds, which is what we did, 15 seconds of video. It's the right balance between not too short that constrains your creativity and not too long where you end up having to wait a lot of time for something to download. It's 15 seconds of beautiful video that you can record very easily. But not all the time can you fit a single scene into 15 seconds without going to multiple clips. And we've heard loud and clear from the community that's what they want. So let's go back and actually record our first clip. So we're recording our first clip here of the barista at Blue Bottle. Now we want to add some color of pulling a shot of espresso. This is making me thirsty. So we see the next shot of pulling some espresso. And then finally, let's see the barista pouring a beautiful latte. So here we are pouring the beautiful latte and I'm recording it by holding down that button. But you know what? His hand's in the way. And that's not good. So what we've allowed you to do is very simply get rid of that last clip. Or frankly, get rid of any clip. All we gotta do is touch the little delete button in the bottom left, it highlights the last clip and deletes it. So let's re-record that last one to get a better collage. Here we are with the beautiful finished latte, and let's just focus on the latte itself. Now we're done recording, 
and this is a great video that I want to share with my friends. So I click Next, and this is where it gets exciting. As of today, 13 brand new custom filters designed for video only. What we realized very early on is that the filters we had for photos were great for photos. They really make your photos look beautiful. But we needed something new for video. We wanted to evolve. So we partnered with an artist who specializes in video filters. And we created 13 brand new gorgeous filters to turn your video into something beautiful. This is really special, so let's show you. As we go through, you can select from any one of the filters, all new names. We choose one, and then all of a sudden we can see the effect and decide what we want to do based on the playback. I'm scrolling through here, and I'm trying to decide what looks best. And you know what? Vesper looks awesome. I really like the look of this latte. Let's just go with that. So I'm going to click Next. One other innovation that happened here, and I want to talk to you about a problem with mobile video is that when you see a mobile video in a feed, often the frame you see is the first frame of the video. We think that's silly. It should be the frame you want to show your friends. Because if I see this frame in a feed, I might not want to tap and watch. But as we scroll through, we can decide, you know what? My friends are going to be way more excited about watching this video if they get to see the really cool latte. So when I click Next, you'll see the preview. This is what people are going to see in the feed. It's a beautiful cover frame that I've decided, and it's a little touch. It's an Instagram touch. These are the little details that make all the difference. So as per normal, I can fill out my, my caption that I want my friends to see. Hashtags work just the same way. This is the same Instagram we all know and love, but it moves. You can add to a photo map. You can name your location or share it to your favorite social network. It's as simple as that. And with that, we upload in the background. And before you know it, it's available for all your friends to see. 130 million people everywhere today are going to be working on this, taking videos of everyday moments and sharing them with their friends. That's really powerful. So let's go through the feed and take a look for a second about what it might look like to see a video in feed. You'll notice this is the Instagram we all know and love. We're scrolling through, and we come upon a video. The video is marked by an icon in the top right. My friend Josh was at a uh, beach this weekend and took a really beautiful video uh, with a filter of some surfers going into the water. This is what we love and expect from Instagram. It's just beautiful content in the feed. And then we're going to scroll down here, and we see Josh's dog at the beach. It's a cute. Everyone thinks it's cute. Um, it is really cute. And actually, this is the moon filter, aptly named after the dog moon. We love naming our filters. So it plays once. It doesn't loop. It doesn't get in the way. It fits right into Instagram. All the details are right. As you scroll down and you lift up your finger, it starts playing immediately. We've worked a ton on making it fast, simple, and beautiful. I'm really excited about this product, and I think the world is going to be as well. So to recap, 15 seconds of beautiful video, clip by clip, 13 custom design filters that make your videos gorgeous. What we did to photos, we just did to video. Select a cover frame to make sure that everyone in the world can see what you're trying to show them. And finally, it shows up on your profile just like photos. It's as easy and simple as that. And day one, Android as well. This means that all of our users can access Instagram. And it's on the web. So no more pointing people at the mobile app to see your videos. You can simply show them your profile on the web, and it's easy to access there as well. So that's video on Instagram. Everything we know and love about Instagram, but it moves. And you know, had we gotten this far, my team, all of us here, would be really proud. It would have been really exciting, because everyone has the power of video in their hands. But I don't think we wanted to give up just there. I have some really cool stuff to show you. <laughs> Filters certainly help make your videos more beautiful but we needed to go an extra step. 
how many of us take videos on our camera roll and think about, well, I remember that beautiful sunset, or I remember that beautiful time with my friends, but you know what, it's all shaky and wobbly and it doesn't look that great. What if you could take video just like the pros? What if you could produce a video that you were really proud of? Let's show you what I mean by video that we wouldn't be proud of. This is a meaningful video. We're at the park, you know, taking videos of our kids. This is the type of video we would all take. We're sitting there and we're trying to keep track of a kid on a bike and it's moving, but you see it's wobbling all over the place. That's not what we want. This is what we all have grown to expect from video, and that's a sad state of affairs. Why? Because we can do better, and we did better. We teamed up with a handful of the world's leading video scientists and created something really awesome. We call it cinema. Cinematic stabilization for your videos that will change video forever. Let me show you what I mean. This is us recording our video in the park. This is the normal video. And this is cinema. Gorgeous, stabilized video for your iPhone. Go. This is the original. Plastic. And this is with Instagram. It's completely mind-blowing. When you're running, chasing your kid, trying to get a beautiful video, now you have the power of cinema in your pocket. This changes everything. And I'm excited to bring you cinema. I'm really proud of this team because we've gone above and beyond to bring you products that you're going to love. Let's recap. Today, video on Instagram available for iOS and Android 15 seconds of beautiful video, 13 custom filters. Select a cover frame to show the world what you recorded. And groundbreaking technology for video that changes video forever and makes your video beautiful. Cinema. So now I'd like to go to a beautiful video that we actually uh, compiled with footage from our community. Because it really is all about the community. So let's roll that video. So thanks to everyone on the live stream for watching. We can't, see, we can't wait to see what videos everyone produces. We're really excited about this announcement. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you so much.